Disaster, Disaster strike. strike. If you have watched my previous video, you probably know that I burnt the stepper drivers on my controller board. As I didn't want to sit around waiting for the replacement board to arrive, I decided to use the Y-axis driver to test my new Z-axis. So, I connected the wire to the Y-axis driver, adjusted the steps per millimeter, and we are good to go. When I say good to go, it is highly subjective. The machine is in no state to print. But I can move the Z-axis, allowing me to use the dial gauge. Depending on your controller board version, adjusting the steps per millimeter can be very tedious. I had to go from 80 all the way to 600. So, I had to improvise. No, I don't intend to drill a hole in my printer. Just a hack I came across. Let's get the rigidity upgrades out of the way before we move on to the printer mechanics. For the Z-axis pillars, I added two upgrades, these corner plates, and these brace rods. And the result? For the original, I was getting a deflection of almost 0.1 mm when I pushed on the frame with my hand. And with the upgrades, that came down to 0.05 mm. Almost a 50% reduction. The result of the Y-axis rigidity upgrade was much more significant. If you haven't seen it, do check out my Ender 3 assembly video where I go over this upgrade. Let's move on to the meaty part, the Z-axis mechanics. These results will directly affect Z-print quality and artifacts. I am going to start with the left side. And here you can see that we are off by just 0.05 millimeters in the first millimeter of movement. Before the upgrade, it was almost 0.3 millimeters, a significant improvement. This small error is caused by the backlash in the system. And to verify this, I repeated this up and down motion a few times. You can see that the movement is very precise, even with the backlash. And when you move up to the second millimeter, there is no more backlash and we get very accurate movement. Here I am moving the z-axis in 0.1 millimeter increments, and the result is near perfect. Then I shift the dial indicator to the right side. Here you can see clearly that the z-stepper is connected to the y-driver, so when I move y on the LCD, it moves the z-axis. You can see that the result is same as the left side. Before the upgrade, this was the unsupported side, and it was worse than the supported side. But after the upgrade, both sides are exactly same. I know how much we all love spreadsheets and charts, so here is a graphical representation of the results. CNC kitchen style. Here our target is 0.1 mm, and you can see that even after 10 steps of 0.1, we were not able to reach it before the upgrade. And you can also see that the right side, which was unsupported, is further off than the supported side. However, after the upgrade, we reached the target on the second step for both sides. And there was no further deviation. And here our target is 1 mm, meaning the z-axis was moved in 1 mm increments. It took almost 5 steps to reach close to our target before the upgrade. And even then, there was some deviation. After the upgrade, we reached the target much quicker, and there is very little deviation. My dial indicator is limited to 10 mm so I was not able to test at increased heights. But from this test print, it is evident that the variation continues and you get unexpected bands throughout the Z travel length. With these results, it is safe to conclude that the upgrade has made a significant improvement to the accuracy of the Z axis. And ideally, this should transfer to an improvement in the print quality as well. As soon as I get the controller board replaced, I will run some test prints for comparison between the original and the upgraded. Now let's take a deeper look into the functioning of this Z-axis, and points of improvement to iron out the kinks. You can see how the Oldham coupling has shifted the nut to the required position. This minimizes friction and binding. And if you look closely, you can see a very small dynamic movement. This shows the Oldham coupling doing its job and absorbing the wobble of the lead screw. 
My lead screw is in good condition so this movement is very small. The belt that came with my dual Z kit was 630 millimeters and the pulleys were 20 teeth. I replaced the pulleys with 30 teeth to increase the resolution, however, because of the increased diameter of the pulleys, the 630 millimeter belt did not fit. So I had to fabricate a new belt. It served me well for testing the printer but whenever the joint passes over the pulley, the motor skips some steps. So I will eventually replace it with a 650 millimeter belt. Also, the teeth engagement of the motor pulley is not ideal, so I plan on adding an idler pulley in this position. This will improve the teeth engagement. It does seem to work fine, and as you have seen earlier, the movement is very accurate, but this modification is for peace of mind and to improve the reliability of the machine. And finally, because of the shape and placement of the Oldham coupling, the extruder fit is very tight, and the filament rubs along the Oldham coupling while feeding. The extruder motor will need to be relocated to another position as I plan on upgrading to a BMG extruder. I have purposefully mounted the Oldham coupling in this position so that the gantry hangs from it. This will preload the dovetails of the coupling and minimize any additional backlash from the coupling itself. That brings us to the end of this short video. I will be working to restore my Ender 3 so I can start printing on it ASAP. Thanks for watching, leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. See you in the next one.